Okay, so I have officially started the class. So this is sixth lecture. Let me recheck everything. Okay, voice. Yeah, everything. Is Too many files open. Okay, it's six o'clock. So mm, we are at this point. Today is four September, and the assignments uh, uh, solutions are out up till assignment number three and we have uh, we have due date of week seven assignment still week six assignment is left so please complete so in first lecture we we had some examples of transport theorem and we saw some 2d examples and in next following class we did some 3d examples then we went into particle kinetics and we played with lot of fbds and then we started work energy relationship and today's class will be about work energy relationship but before going into this I want to speak something about abstraction. So it is not in the course, but actually it encompasses everything which is in this subject of advanced dynamics. Before you analyze any advanced dynamics, what you get to know first is why you are doing that and when you start looking at the dynamics then you think there are so uh, can you put yourself in mute thanks okay so i was talking about abstraction that what is abstraction abstraction is creating a mathematical model out of any physical system so it can be anything wherever the dynamics is into the play dynamics means the evolution in time as the time progress something evolves okay and uh, it can be periodic it can be non periodic it can be anything so it can be chaotic so there could be many responses to it but uh, depending on the system characteristics we have to first analyze the system so what we do we make a mathematical model out of it so how can you create a mathematical model is first you have to look at the abstraction so without going into much theory we will just start with a practical problem involving a cat So just a question, uh, if I throw a cat like this, what do you think, will it land on its two feet or four feet or it will just die? So options, let me put the options. Option one is. Cat will die because of fall. Option two is 
cat will land on its four feet option 3 Either cat will scratch you. Can anybody? Uh, so if I the question is, if I throw a cat like this, like okay, let's correlate with the human example. If we throw a human like this from a building, will that human will be able to land on its two feet? you can put on the chat also no right but the cat has a unique ability of scratching you and landing on your on its four feet how that a cat do that thing now we should ask this cat so it it got revealed by studying the motion of the cat and then it was about because we have seen cat falling from 9th floor 10th floor and still it's landing on its four feet so something extraordinary thing is there in cat which we obviously don't have so actually can cat uh, move their front and hind limb independently of each other so there are some special powers in cat which they can do and which enables them to adjust their limb position and in that way they can control their orientation from the fall so it's like if you release a cat it will first detect how much height it's released from then it will slowly move its body somehow to so that it will land on its four feet so here are some major points so there are different stages of it stage 1 is what i called it detection don't worry we are not going into any math part of it we will be just uh, solving this problem in uh, in very technical jargon term we are not going into any math it's just we are making a mathematical mathematical model out of physical model so when the cat detects the detection it kind of uh, first detect how much height it is from uh, the floor and then it has a automatic response and what are this automatic response is given by the successive other stages now stage 2 is where it arcs its back so as you can see it makes a curved uh it makes a curvature okay so it's a arcing of a back and this arcing initiates the twisting moment now you see that in this uh let's say the infographic as well as the real photo uh it's not exactly the same but obviously the cat expression are different uh but you can see that how the body changes its uh, orientation so in the second figure the legs and whether the hind legs and the uh, front legs both are getting into different direction okay so this is called twisting as we twist our back like this okay so their leg as well as um, upper body part twist in different direction just like a yoga so that is the first thing bending and torsion okay next what it what it does so once that bending is done or the torsion is done actually it, it is both because it arcs its back and then it twist so it's like arcing it back and then twisting it so it allows the cat to rotate its upper body in the opposite direction to its lower body okay so still we haven't figured out how so still just the upper body part is now aligned to the floor 
okay but lower body part is still there now what it does it extends its paw like this and now what happens that two things happen one thing the extending of this thing gives the cat a control or how much to rotate if it's very far down there so it will just slowly uh, extend its limbs fr front limbs and if it's very near then it will quickly extend its limbs so it gives us the control okay so when it extends its front leg outward it helps to slow down the rotation so that is very important so this is the main reason of the cat being confident enough of just falling from the floors and also when the cat is extending its limb what is happening that the air resistance which, is, which the cat is getting that will also increase so it will also slow down the cat so both these points are very beneficial to cat in slowing down as well as having a control over the rotation so that is stage 3 now stage 3 is flexing of the front uh, limbs okay now what happens okay so still the back part is rotatory in the different direction as you can see here okay so how this thing comes down is by extending the hind legs so when the hind legs are extended it's like you're stretching your feet okay when cat does that in this orientation when it stretches its leg then what happens that there is an automatic twist because already we introduced some twist in the whole system so it's like you are floating in the space and you wanted to go from one point to another point okay and you have a ball with you so you just release the ball into a one direction you will go into the opposite direction Okay. similar thing happens with the cat where it rotates in its body uh, the upper body and it stores energy and when there is a point of release so that it comes to the orientation then it will uh, reverse it back like it will store energy and then release energy so stage 4 is all about releasing the energy So what are the steps? It flexes, flex its hind legs. Okay, due to that, what happens? There is a follow back twist or bending, and then uh, all the limbs are in now uh, downward direction, and the cat is now ready to land, just like our Chandrayaan three. So now the question was about developing a abstraction. Now still we haven't found the mathematical model, right? So we have to find that mathematical model. There's a disclaimer: please don't do this at home. Uh, while that self-writing increases the cat chances, but obviously there is a chance of cat dying. Okay, so uh, option A is also correct here. Cat can die also. So please don't do this at home. Okay, so starting with our abstraction, first always the abstraction when we are converting a physical model into a mathematical model, we always have a purpose. So what is the purpose of this abstraction? If it had been that how cat jumps, okay, then I would have used some other model. But here it's about the uh, super super cat ability ability to land it on four feet while uh, falling down so the purpose of abstraction here is the study of movement and uh, 
that moment is when cat lands its feet first while falling okay so a short model can be made in a control algorithm that there is some sensing equipments and those sensing equipment just sense the orientation so how much the orientation is if that orientation is uh, very much disturbed then how to control it so second part is controlling controlling and actuating element so the controller is connected to actuators and that gives us the all the legs in the downward direction so that gives the output so hence this is the automatic response okay so this is the first cut abstraction model in which we can uh, say that we can let's have a sensor on the let's say cat's back for the abstraction we are making so it's just like making a robot a cat robot where it can do this function okay so that robot when it's released from a height that robot is capable of reading that how much height it is so we have a lot of sensors so we can use those sensors and then uh, a very simple sensor is i will just give you example so you put a um, jam on a bread okay and tie on the uh, cat's back and just leave the cat like this so to prevent that jam uh to uh, so to prevent that jam to stuck on this uh, floor so what what cat can do is flip okay and that is that flipping what is happening so this is a simple sensor design which we can do so that will gives us the basic equipment of stage 1 and stage 6 stage 1 is detection stage 5 is landing but the major thing which is happening is in these stages stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 so we will talk more about that so first of all uh, is it 3d model or 2d model so this is 3d model because the cat is rotating as well as bending okay and it is also flexing so three motions are there bending torsion and actually uh, deformable bodies so abstraction should be in 3d so a simple abstraction i have made like this so there is there are two cylinder or major body part and it is connected by some element so this is uh, bending torsion element and uh, all those all these are joined by hinge okay and it is actuated so it it is it can be uh, rotated in some sort of manner uh, in reality the tail plays a very much uh, like very high role in this phenomena but as of now we are just neglecting the tail okay actually tail is the main actuator in the cat's body but uh, for now we will just neglect it now stage 2 is where it was bending so now how it is doing like that is that deformable body or bending torsion body it can rotate or it can twist as well as bend okay so that's what is happening and if you fix the back side of it like because the cat back side is same as the uh, first figure so hence there is only rotation in the first uh, figure so hence what happens that uh, there is a bending as well as torsion into the system and it is kind of a energy stored okay so this is uh, energy being stored into the spine and uh, uh, then there was a four four hind uh, extension so when it did that extension thing there is a control over rotation okay and also there was a air resistance so when there was a air resistance what happened that um it slowed down and it has a control over the rotation so cat know that how much extension it can provide all right and uh, how much uh, slowly it had to move so it had to first perceive the distance and then it had to move like that then final part which is the most magical part of the 
whole scenario is rear leg extension so when it extended its real rear leg what happened that there is a follow back twist so just imagine a um, uh, cantilever beam being into like this and it is like twisted also and just you release those twist what happens that it will come back to its sweep position so that is what is happening so it, when it flexes its leg the hind leg it kind of create a effect which a domino effect which kind of gives the follow back movement and that is the moment where uh, two out of its four limbs it comes to the downward position so hence it lands so today you know how a cat land from a uh, high very high very high buildings to ground and still they are alive okay moving to so this, let me label the question question number 1 so any doubt till now you can uh, write in the chat window or you can ask me directly this is the dynamics of the cat okay okay second question is again about something biological so let's say there is a cd drive and it is rotating at very high speed uh, and uh, it has angular acceleration of alpha okay now this ant is moving from point a to b in a straight line so this disk is moving and also a and b points are also moving so what we have to do is we have to imagine a realistic situation so this is tricky part of the question and also the non mathematical part so where you have to imagine a realistic scenario like how many degree of freedom do you need to describe this ant motion so to define what a degree of freedom is how many independent coordinates are required to describe the motion of this ant any idea So you have to think like a, a practical person. Don't look at the question itself as a question, which is our competitive exam structure where we just try to solve the problem. But you have to think practically. You have to feel like an ant. Assume yourself being an ant and. You are on a very large disc rotating at very high speed, okay, and it's increasing in the speed because there is angular acceleration. So that means that it is increasing by so omega is equal to alpha t. Omega is the speed of rotation, and as the time progresses, this alpha t becomes more and more, okay. So this omega becomes more and more. So just imagine yourself being uh, uh, walking in a straight line in a very rotating high rotating disc what will you feel okay this is question about that any comments okay so i will go to the solution now
ओके सो so anyone any answers or you can explain the situation also the answer of this question is not related to physics or math this is a very interesting question okay uh, so the answer is it all depends on the ants will so if ant because you have seen uh, when ants are walking on uh, let's say um, some plate or something and you shrug them off but they are not uh, moving a bit they will just hold on to the plate do you remember those time so actually this is also something like that uh, so to explain the physics part of it why the ants will is important in this type of question is first we have to look at what the degree of freedom is and what actually is happening okay right now the system is uh, and working straight line on a disk so we won't uh, worry about the this we will just take two points being a and b and uh, there is a straight line and uh, and is working there let me draw that and So this ant is walking like this I don't know if walking with six legs is called walking oh, okay sorry we just destroyed our ant yeah. so this is our ant and let's see it is rotating and now ant is moving from here to here all right so what will happen we will look at this ant how much force it is experiencing so let's take out this ant somewhere else now we are that ant okay let's say this ant has a mass m and what type of uh, forces it would be carrying is 
एम बी मॉस ऑफ द एंड so there will be two force component one uh, in radial direction and one in a tangential direction so radial direction the force will be m omega square r okay here omega and r are both changing with time we know that omega is changing as this and r exactly we don't know how this r is changing because in that disk if you will see r at this point let's say in this figure r at this point is same as r at that point b point okay but in middle it won't be same okay so r1 is nearly equal to r2 but r3 is not equal to r1 okay so we cannot say anything about r but the thing is they will be near to one value so but what the impression is that omega is increasing and omega square also will be increasing so hence this radial force will slowly increase into very high account so what will happen the cat will kind of fling okay it's up to its will to withstand this force by providing a stickiness from his uh, feet or uh, its uh, limbs so this is half question solved there is a tangential force also which is equal to m alpha r this is also some force and uh, let's look at the direction part of it so the radial will be just outwards so this fr will be like this and the other f f tangential will be back side because the uh, disc is rotating in this direction so the rotation the force will be in the back side and what actually does it do is since it had to reach from point a to b it is getting pushed in back side so first it had to withstand that force and then it has to provide additional force to reach to point b so it, the story is very tough for this and and uh, here what is happening that uh, as it is moving from point a to b the situation getting more tough and tough because this will be the radial uh, resultant force by parallelogram uh, rule f resultant and then the friction force and had to provide in the opposite direction so this is will and will so if this question is asked in very textbook form then the answer is 1 because it has to go from point a to b so it's a straight line so that's the degree of freedom but if it is asked uh, keep practical scenario into mind so then you have to think about these stuff okay because this is what uh, makes you a more practical point of view so it had to withstand both of these forces if it didn't it, it will be just flung out of the system and then uh, that's a different problem altogether now because it's like a uh, ant is flying now what will be the degree of freedom okay so the answer is depends on the ants will all right now moving to the next question
क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री रीड द क्वेश्चन सो दे इज अफॉर्म डिस्क एंड दैट इज स्टेशनरी फॉर फॉर नाउ ओके बट इट कैन रोल विदाउट स्लिपिंग ऑन अ हॉरिजेंटल लाइन एज शोन इन द फिगर नाउ दिस डिस्क हैज अ शॉर्ट एक्सेल ऑफ नेगेजल मास एंड रेडियस एंड फ्रॉम दिस एक्सेल इज अ सस्पेंडेड अ सिंपल पेंडुलम ओके सो दिस अ पेंडुलम ऑन अ let's say a very large wheel and the length of this um, pendulum is less than the radius of this uh disc now we have to find again find the degree of freedom determine the degree of freedom as well as constraint to describe the motion of the bob so first of all how many degree of freedom is required to describe the motion by the way any doubt in the last question okay i will take your silence as yes no doubt yes no doubt ओके सो मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री हेयर अगेन इट्स अ सिमिलर क्वेश्चन नाउ हेयर नो विल इज देयर बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज नॉन लिविंग सो हेयर व्हाट इज हैपनिंग दैट दिस थीटा नॉट इफ इट्स डिस्टर्ब इफ दिस मास इज डिस्टर्ब व्हाट विल हैपन दिस मास विल गो इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड देन इट विल कम बैक ओके but this going and coming back will give some rotation to this bigger mass all right so that is the whole page so we'll write this solution here itself it is one degree of freedom problem and let's see that degree of freedom is theta not which is angle made by the pendulum from a horizontal okay so but what about the other rotation so let phi be that now how to find their constraint equation so it can be either found but mass balance where we uh, balance the moment of inertia like how much rotation it is caused or we can go by energy balance so in energy balance what will happen kinetic energy is equal to potential energy
kinetic energy terms are half ml square i of the disk r square into r square will come into uh, id only so this is of the uh, constraint equation this complete our question number 3 now moving on to question number 4 <coughs> so here a ball is rolling without slipping inside a ball B which is rolling without slipping on the rigid beam the rigid beam is free to sway on the side and the ball is given position uh, ball is at the given position it is given a initial tangential velocity v v naught so again the question is what are the degree of freedom required to describe the motion of the ball so you have to think practically in this also Okay, so there is a jula and it can swing sideways. This can go like this and that side also. And then there is oh already have made uh, okay. Hmm. Then there is this ball.
some cutting shooting okay so this is the ball change to dotted line and also group it and there is one more ball for A initially what was at this point and now it is maybe somewhere here let's say this is the uh, another edge this is A this is B and uh, okay so first of all the first case will be where uh, this a the velocity is given is so high that it flings off okay so it's like at this point at this uh, c point let's take this point as c it releases itself into a projectile now it can now there there can be two things when the speed is not so great so what will happen in that it will just drop at this point after having a projection uh, projectile and then from here uh, it can go anyway like this or back side so it depends on the properties of uh, the collision but if it's high enough then it can go down also okay so two type of projectile let's say projectile one projectile two the second which is uh, most common case where in the textbook is when v naught is small so that the system vibrates okay so it will go up to this point and then it will come back so it will go up to this point and then it will come back okay so it describes all the cases so this covers our abstraction part we learned about abstraction and now we will be back to the questions what we were doing in the previous question previous class so this is question uh, this is question 4 so we will start question 5 ok so I am taking 5 minute break
after that time you can read the question and also the strategy so it is based on impulse and momentum question now
ओके तो इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव एन ऑटोमोबाइल इज वेइंग 1800 केजी इज ड्रिवन डाउन अ 5 डिग्री इंक्लाइन एट स्पीड ऑफ 100 किलोमीटर पर आवर व्हेन द ब्रेक्स आर अप्लाइड causing a constant total braking force of 7000 newton we have to determine the time required for the automobile to come to a stop so we have to apply uh, principle of impulse and momentum and the impulse is equal to the product of the constant force and the time interval ओके सो अप्लाइंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इम्पल्स एंड मोमेंटम एम वी वन इज इक्वल टू और एम वी वन प्लस समीशन ऑफ इम्पल्स फ्रॉम पॉइंट वन टू टू इज इक्वल टू एम वी टू नो टेकिंग कॉम्पोनेंट्स पैरल टू इंक्लाइन एम वी वन प्लस एम जी साइन फाइव डिग्री रेफर द फिगर एफ टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी हैव हंड्रेड किलोमीटर पर आवर राइट सो दिस इज गोइंग एज अ हंड्रेड किलोमीटर पर आवर मीटर पर सेकेंड थाउजेंड मीटर मल्टीपल थ्री सिक्स जीरो जीरो सेकेंड सो दिस कम्स आउट टू बी एट मीटर पर सेकेंड एटीन हंड्रेड बी वन इज Twenty seven point seven eight plus eighteen hundred into nine point eight one sine five degree. So here T will be also there. with the impulse huh? That is also T, I think. F T F into T.
so this will give us p is equal to uh, 9.16 second so this much time to deaccelerate from 0 to uh, 100 to Hundred kilometer per hour to zero. Now, point to be noted in this question are We can use Newton's second law or by FPT to solve this problem. First, we would determine the cause the acceleration. then uh, we have to separate variables and then integrate So it can relate the velocity, acceleration, in this, uh, in this case, deacceleration. Now, now next is question number five. An automobile of mass thousand kg is driven down a five degree incline at a speed of seventy two km per hour when the brakes are applied causing a constant total braking force of 5000 newton now determine the distance traveled by the automobile as it come to the stop so now strategy is to evaluate the change in kinetic energy and then uh, determine the distance required for the work to equal the kinetic energy change We will go step by step. So first step is evaluate the change in kinetic energy. So let's see what is happening. So let's say it has moved up to x meter. So V1 is 72 km per hour. Let's quickly change the units. So seventy-two km per hour means so into thousand 
now t1 finding t1 is equal to half m v1 square which is equal to half 1000 kg into 20 meter per second square Two lakh joule. Now, since V two is zero, and T two is also zero, now finding the distance required for the work to equal the kinetic energy change. For that, we have to find U from one to two. So here we have to find the Uh, force, okay. So force comes out to be minus five thousand newton into x plus thousand kgs into small g Into sine five degrees. I think I should write small. Yeah, this is okay. Into x. Balancing the equations, T1 plus U1 to 2 is equal to T2, and x so 2 1 2 3 4 2 2 lakh joules is equal to 4 1 4 5. To x आप ऑफिस जाएंगे क्या अच्छा अच्छा ओके सो दिस गिज एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी एट पॉइंट थ्री मीटर so that was the distance required for the work to equal the kinetic energy change now let's have a uh, little bit of thinking try to solve this question using newton's law uh, you required like determining the cause deacceleration from the fvd and then integrating this to use the given velocity formation so that is the that is one way and uh, another way is by using uh, momentum uh, conservation so that will be looking after uh, half of the class and uh, using the using the principle of work of energy it also allows you to avoid that uh, calculation so let me write it down solving this problem
using Newton's second law would require determining the cause deacceleration from the free body diagram and then uh, integrating So this is insight one. Okay, moving on to the next question. So two blocks are joined by an ex inextensible cable as shown. If the system is released from rest, determine the velocity of the block A after it has moved 2 meter. Assume that the coefficient of the friction between block A and the plane is mk which is equal to 0 0.25 and that of the pulley is weightless and frictionless. So again the strategy is to apply the principle of work and energy separating to the block A and B. Then when the two relations are combined the work of the cable force cancel and then we can solve for the velocity so first is modeling and analysis and we are applying the principle of work energy separately to block A and B now this is the figure first block A
so this gives us 490 newton now we don't know what the velocity is so we will apply principle of work and energy and but we know it started from the rest so t1 is 0 then u12 has two component to it Can you mute the oh, cell? Thank you. Okay. So yes. Yes, Samarji. You have some doubt? So this potential energy will have two term because two masses are moving hence like this and now WP Can you please mute yourself? So when these two relations are combined the work of the cable force is cancelled and now can solve for the velocity so let's do that
so this will give the two equation and we can sum them up so these will cancel out solving we come down to be 4.43 meter per second now uh, here we have individually applied energy conservation into block A and block B but we can also combine uh, and the combined energy and then there won't be any use of FC but uh, actually this FC is uh, the tension force so hence uh, it's a constraint force to find this constraint force we had to take individual So if you have to save time and you don't need a constraint force, knowledge of the constraint force, then you can use for the whole system and there won't be any issue. Okay, moving to the next question. Question seven. So here a spring is used to stop a 60 kg package 
which is sliding on the horizontal surface the spring has the constant k and uh, it is held by the cable so that it is initially compressed to 120 mm now this package has the velocity of 2.5 meter per second in the position shown and the maximum deflection of the spring is 14 mm now first we have to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the package and the surface and b we have to find the velocity of the package as it passes again through the position shown so the package is getting bound by this spring arrangement so here our strategy will be apply the principle of work and energy between the initial position and the position at which the spring is fully compressed and the velocity is zero the only unknown in the relation is the friction of coefficient because distance we know that it will go up to 40 mm and uh, the distance from this package from this point to that uh, spring arrangement that is also known the only unknown will be coefficient of friction next we can apply the principle of work and energy for the rebound of this package and the only unknown in this relationship will be velocity at the final position first part initial kinetic energy comes out to be 187.5 joule and final kinetic energy when it stop for a instant then it's zero now if you find the potential energy for the work done we find the work done from 1 to 2 by the force of friction mu k is our unknown normal force is this is equal to since mu k is uh, dimensionless
applying the area of the trapezoid formula we can find the work done by the spring delta x is known Work done from moving from one point to two point. It's given by the friction force plus the spring. Work done by the spring. the formula the energy conservation since t2 is 0 only we have to take care of t1 which is we have already found out the starting so this gives us our new k zero point two that is our solution now that this is the only one part now for the second part we know that t2 is 0 but we are going to now t3 and now in t3 v3 is unknown and the potential energy from 2 to 3 is again either by the friction force or spring force So we know value of mu so now applying the energy conservation for the second time
this gives our solution V3 is equal to 1.103 meter per second so here we needed to break this problem into two segments and uh, from the first segment we were able to determine the coefficient of friction and then we could use principle of work and energy to determine the velocity of the packet at the the same location but at first location only but now it's coming from the different side so point to be noted are system does not lose any energy due to the spring and it returns it returns all of its energy back to the package need something else if we need some absorption of the energy those are called dampers and we will be visiting it in the next part of the course moving to the next question question numbers So a thousand kg uh, car starts from the rest from point A as shown in the figure and it moves without friction down the track as shown. Determine first the force exerted by the track on the car at point 2 which is the, the lowest of the datum and be the minimum safe value of the radius of the curvature at point 3. So again, uh, the strategy is to apply the principle of work and energy to determine the velocity at point 2. Then applying Newton's second law to find normal force by the track at the point 2. Then applying principle of work and energy to determine the velocity at point 3. Then applying Newton's second law to find minimum radius of curvature at point 3. So you get a positive normal force is exerted by the drag, otherwise it will fly out. So it's similar to the previous question, three points and we have to apply principle of work energy two times. Since it started with rest, so T1 is equal to 0. Work done from point 1 to 2. Is positive.
was chances then we found out the velocity at the point 2 so a part is then for b part we have to apply newton second law n is equal to 5w so w is our weight here Now the third uh, or B part. So V3 comes out to be 12.13 meter per second. So applying the tandem of Newton's second law now. So we have used both formulas here. This gives us the value of row 3 which is equal to 15 meter. So in this example We needed both Newton's second law and principle of work and energy. Work energy is used to determine the speed of the car and Newton's second law is used to determine the normal force. One thing which you can also do is you can provide uh, from 1 and 2 you can take the force of the normal force and then you can um, apply energy theorem. Energy equation at that point also
next let's do the analysis of this question here what happened at one point that a normal force of 5 w was there which is actually equivalent to 5 g's so like you know fighter pilot those are trained for 5 g's but here the thing is it is experience for very short time and uh, so for safety only we would want to make sure that the radius of curvature was quite a bit larger than 15 meter because it's like they are having a sharp turn and that would be not that comfortable Before moving to next question, I'm just take a five minute break.
So in next question we have a dumb waiter. So it's a small manually uh, in here it's like manually or mechanically Operated right elevator. So this elevator D and its loads have the combined mass of 300 kg while the counterwe counterweight C has a mass of 400 kg. You have to determine the power delivered by the electric motor M where dumb waiter A is moving up at the constant speed of 2.5 meter per second and B has the instantaneous velocity of 2.5 meter per second and then acceleration of 1 meter per second square both directed upward so as shown in the diagram so the strategy which we can use is uh, force exerted by this motor cable has the same direction as the dumb waiter's velocity so power delivered by the motor is equal to uh, F V D where V D is equal to 2.5 meter per second so in the first case bodies are in uniform motion so we can determine the force exerted by the motor cable from uh, conditions for the static equilibrium but in the second case where uh, both bodies are accelerating we can apply Newton's second law to each body to determine the required motor cable force so in the first case the static equilibrium so from free body So this gives t equal to 962 newton 
and when we will be drawing free body diagram of the this f comes out to be 981 newton now talking about the power power is given by f into vd so 981 so 981 uh, newton into our 2.5 meter per second Just putting it on the note. Okay, thanks. So now in the second case, now both bodies are now accelerating. So this final is two four five two watts. Now in second case both bodies are accelerating so we have to apply Newton's second law to each body to determine the required motor cable force. it is given now AC we can find out Could question the Kano Pura is there? What dumb beater come at love? आप लिख एक बार ट्राई कर सकते हैं साथ ही साथ मेरे मैं आपको म्यूट कर देता हूं अगर आपको कोई डाउट होगा तो पूछ लियो तो in this question there are two things one is dumb waiter and uh, then it's counterweight so this C is its counterweight this C is counterweight and You have to determine the power delivered by the electric motor. So the motor is here. So we have to find power delivered by it when 
this dumb waiter this is the dumb waiter So there are two cases one the meter is moving up at a constant speed and another where it has an instantaneous velocity as well as acceleration so the strategy is is different in both cases So power we know is equal to f into v d, where f is the force which is it is experiencing and velocity is known is two point five meter per second in both cases. The problem comes in the second case where both bodies are accelerating. So we have to apply Newton's law to each body. to determine the required motor cable force Now in the second case, we are drawing free body at point C. From this, the tension comes out to be eight sixty two newton. So once F is find out, we can find the power. so point to be noted at this question is when it is in cons constant acceleration we the power goes less but when there is a, there is a need for sudden acceleration or uh, then the power is more
so finally at more acceleration more power is required So this was question number 9.